So, we want to talk about intensity, because we're going to get into sound, and that's intense. Oh, camping is intense, too. But we're talking about intensity of sound. In order to understand the idea of intensity, we need to define it. Intensity is defined as the energy going through some area divided by that area divided by time also. <clears throat> so we define some area here and we say that there must be energy flowing through this area. Let's see, this is an area A and there's energy going through it. That's the energy that goes through it. And of course the energy takes some time to go through it. If we waited twice as long, then twice as much energy would go through. That doesn't double our intensity. It just says that the energy, more energy goes through because of time. But I wanna know the rate at which energy goes through some area. So the rate at which energy changes is actually called power. So we can redefine intensity to just be power divided by area. All right, and its units then are the units of power. The units of intensity are the units of power divided by the units of area. So we'll say that the units are watts per square meter. <clears throat> now, intensity is cool, and so I want you to consider somebody, I don't know, let's say this, uh, mm -hmm, this is a siren going off right here and sound is going out from that siren, right? And I guess I'm drawing wave peaks going out from that siren. We're gonna be doing this a lot as we move on here. And the issue is you know that it gets quieter as you get further away, right? You know that it's going to get quieter as we get further away. And the reason it gets quieter is because the wee -oo -wee of the siren is getting spread out. So why don't I ask you, if we're saying the power of the siren is fixed, it's gonna keep making that wee-oo wee-oo sound. If I'm over here, then there's some area that, oh man, this has gotta be three-dimensional. This is gonna be kind of tricky. There's some area that that energy is spread over here. How does that area depend on how far we are away from the source? How does that area depend on aura. And to do that, we need to consider if we snap our fingers, if we have a siren or something, what's happening to that sound wave? Where does it go? You know that on a wake, on a lake, if I drop a stone in a lake, then it will make these kind of these kind of uh, ripples that go out in a circle. But is that where the sound goes? Does the sound go out in a circle? No way. The sound goes out in a sphere. So we're talking about the area, in order to find the area here, we need the area of the sphere of radius r, the distance that we are away. So if we say, uh, let's say, let's let's introduce this a little bit. This would be uh, intensity of a sound <clears throat> in sound um, from a point source at distance r. Here's our intensity. In that case, I is going to be, well, the power of the point source, and then we need to divide it by the surface area of the sphere that's at that distance r, because as the sound spreads out, it gets weaker. We're taking that energy and spreading it over a greater and greater area, so the intensity at each square meter here is less than the intensity of a similar square meter here. Consider this, here's this square meter here, right? What if I came up here, much closer, and I studied this square meter? Would you agree that I'm getting a much greater fraction of the total energy of the source at this distance with my square meter than I would be at this distance with my square meter. Of course, that's because the sound is spreading out. I hope that's making sense. I'm gonna stop repeating myself there. This is going to be four pi times r squared. That is the area of the surface. Oh shoot, that's the surface area. Surface area of sphere of radius radius R. Okay, cool. Now the cool thing about intensities of sounds is they have a huge range. So that actually encourages us to do some very interesting stuff. I wanna write down a couple intensities for you here. This is uh, intensity of, I don't know, um, bleeding. Bleeding or pain. This is the intensity at which your ears hurt. This intense, oh man, your ears are going to actually hurt already at one watt per square meter. 
but the faintest sound that you can possibly hear, now that's way down here, this is the intensity, we'll call it I naught, we're actually gonna define I naught to be the uh, smallest, smallest humans can hear. It's not a fundamental number by any means, it's just the, the tiniest um, vibration that you can possibly hear. The ear is fantastically amazing. And the smallest intensity that you can hear is 0 0.0000000000001 watts per square meter. That is, oh man. So it makes sense to try to abbreviate this, right? This is 10 to the negative 12th watts per square meter. And you can actually hear much more than your bleeding or pain limit. You can actually hear up to, you know, you could be next to a rocket, right? At some point, your eardrum's actually going to rupture, and that will be a lot more bleeding. But that's about, um, I, uh, stuff breaks, we'll call it. Stuff breaks inside your ear at about 1,000 watts per square meter. So if you do this calculation, this is an interesting calculation about the smallest, um, intensity that human ears can hear. This turns out that it's a vibration, you know, sound is a vibration of air particles, right? So the air particles right in front of your eardrum are vibrating less than a width of one molecule at this intensity. You can hear it in a perfectly silent room. You can hear the vibration of the air molecules even if they move less than one molecule. They, your ear is sensitive enough to detect that, which I think is pretty awesome. But I want you to notice that there's a range, not just of like one to five, but a range of 10 to the negative 12th to 10 to the third. That's a factor, oh man. That's a factor of, well, let's see this. We can write these out. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. That's an enormous range of human hearing. In fact, this is a million, this is a billion, this is a trillion. That's a quadrillion. You can hear sounds that are one quadrillion times different from other sounds. So we don't like this. This is too big of a range to handle actually writing the numbers. So we introduced this fun system called decibels. And a decibel is a way for us to keep track of a really big range of sounds. So a decibel a decibel is related to the idea of loudness. That's an E. A decibel is related to the idea of loudness, not intensity, but intensity level. I'll put another arrow over here and say that a decibel measures intensity level. And I better put that in quotes so that you can dig this. intensity level. It's not, strictly speaking, intensity because we're going to do a little bit of division. So intensity is going to be defined like this. I want, to, not intensity, but intensity level, the decibel. It will be defined like this. I've got intensity and I want to compare that intensity to I naught, the faintest intensity that you can possibly hear. So this is going to be a dimensionless number. And as we saw before, this number will be anywhere between one, if intensity is I naught, uh, up to, I guess, a quadrillion. So it's between one and 10 to the 15th or something. That's a huge range. So let's instead not just take this ratio, but take the log of it. And for some stupid historical reasons, we use the number 10 here. We ought to use the number E. Can you figure out why we use the number 10? I hate that. Now, instead, we're going to, well, Okay, so we use log base 10, which is frustrating, but then there's another historical complication that says we're not just going to do this, which would be very sensible on its own. Then we get a range of, of bells between one and 15, but because it's a decibel, we're actually going to multiply this by 10. Oh my gosh. So it looks rather complicated, but we'll spend some time working with it in class. The point is that I not is the faintest sound that you can hear, and it's 10 to the negative 12th watts per square meter. And now you can do calculations with de decibels. And our, uh, once you understand this, well, I mean, I guess you need to know how to work with logs, right? You could find the intensity from the decibel level by doing a little bit of math. 
I guess I can say that intensity, well, let's see, I'm gonna have to divide by 10, so it's gonna be beta divided by 10, and then I need to get rid of this log base 10, so I needed to raise it to the 10th power, and then I also need to, oh shoot, multiply by I naught. So it's gonna be I naught times 10 to the, ooh, that's not formatted well. Let's just cross that out a little bit. I want the intensity to be intensity naught times 10 to the beta divided by 10. Cool, we'll play with that a little bit. Bye-bye.